Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So recently there's been a lot more interest in getting the SKR Mini E3 V3 working with the CR10. I'm gonna walk you through what firmware examples you can work with, uh, cause I don't have one for the CR10. Uh, there is one for the CR10 S5 you could use, um, but you'd have to modify that one quite a bit because it assumes that you have a BL touch that's wired in a very specific way. And the build plate is also a different size than the standard CR10s. So my recommendation is really just starting with the one for the Ender 3 Pro and then modifying a couple things. The main reason for that is uh, simplicity. Uh, there's a lot of things that are just enabled and tested on there that already work and you don't have to worry about changing settings for the BL Touch unless you have one. And when it comes to firmware, you're really just looking at the actual board itself. There's not much tied to the actual printer with the exception of like the bed size, the stepper motor speeds, that kind of stuff. But the speed for the stepper motors are pretty much the same uh, for a lot of these printers. Um, the screen also comes into play, but for the printers that we're talking about, they all have this standard screen, uh, so it works just fine. Um, I also will put this on my website. I hope to have that firmware up there by end of weekend. Uh, so if you just want to go ahead and download that, you can do that as well. Um, but I want to show you how to actually make it. Like I said, for some reason, this has been coming up quite a bit in the community recently. I don't know if more people are just getting it and realizing there is no config example for the CR10 for some reason. But that was the main reason why I wanted to make this video, just because of the number of requests that I've had for it. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over the computer. I'll show you how to get everything set up so you can create the Marlin build. And then all you have to do from there is put it on the SD card and uh, put it in your printer and power it on. One thing I did want to note on the SD cards, uh, there's been a lot of issues uh, with the size and formatting. Uh, they say specifically that it should be 8 gig or less and format it as FAT32. If you're a Windows user and have larger SD cards, you could create a 8 gig partition, uh, which I'll make another video kind of covering that. Uh, that has gotten through the issue for some people. Um, you can also do it in Linux, there's just a lot more to it and I'm not sure if there's enough interest to actually make that video. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started, uh, but if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks. Alright, so we're here at the Marlin download page. First thing we need to do is grab the version that we're going to download. I'm going to go with the 2.1 bug fix. Uh, if you want a stable release, you can go up to uh, the Marlin 2 line or 2.1.2 here. Um, with that though, you will want to use the configuration example from there, um, but I prefer the nightly builds in most case, uh, just because I change up the firmware quite a bit, and they're mostly stable. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and download that, and then we'll go ahead and load the config examples. Uh, I want to spend a couple minutes here um, to talk about options. So if we go into config, go into examples, uh, Creality and CR10 or any of the CR10s, we'll see that there isn't any uh, config example for the SKR Mini E3 V3, uh, which is why I'm making this video. But if we go into like the CR10 S5 here, I think this is the only one that does have an example for the E3 V3. Um, it has a weird setup so it assumes that you have a bl touch and it's connected to the z stop pin the z stop removed and a lot of that um so this will take a little bit more work to modify than just going back with like the ender 3 pro which is what i typically do and just modify the build size because even with this one you're still going to have to change the build plate size because it's the um, s5 so it's a larger build volume uh, so there are still changes you have to make and then if you have the bl touch and it's plugged into the bl touch port and the z stop still connected you have to make some changes around that as well so let's go ahead and take a look at the one for the ender 3 pro just go back to creality uh, just go to ender 3 pro i use the pro a lot because they have a lot of examples and um, for most of the printers like the um, the non-pro the v2 and really most of the ender threes they all have a lot the same build volume and only a couple small tweaks like the v2 has the different screen which is a different story but that's one chain but going with one of the build examples with the standard screen uh, gives you uh, less changes you have to make so i would just go in here and this would be the config example i would want to copy over to our config folder when we start making the changes so to do this i'm just gonna go back to configurations here and go to download zip which is going to download all of them all right now in the downloads folder we have the actual build and we have the config example so we're going to want to extract both of those so i'm just going to extract them here
All right, now that those are both extracted, I'm gonna to wanna to copy my firmware over to a firmware folder that I have closer to the root of the actual drive. Um, if you have nested folders and stuff, you're gonna have an issue with file length. Um, so I always just create like a firmware folder under uh, the C drive and then I'll just make a new folder here, um, like CR10. And then I will go ahead and copy everything in Marlin here over to that folder. All right, now we wanna go ahead and get our config example. So let's go and go back to our downloads, go into config example. The structure is gonna be the same as I just showed you in GitHub. So just go into here, config, examples, uh, Creality, and then Ender 3 Pro and SKR Mini E3 V3. And, so, and then we'll copy these four files. And then we'll go over to our firmware, go into the Marlin folder and paste those. You're gonna to want to overwrite the existing files. So replace files and destination folder. All right, now with that, we have everything we need to actually make the build. Let's go ahead and open up VS Code. If you haven't set up VS Code or gone through these builds before, I have a video I'll link to below that kind of covers the basics of getting started, uh, but I'll walk you through everything you need here. All right, so before you go ahead and open up the folder, uh, if you haven't already, I recommend downloading uh, the Marlin Auto Build plugin. Uh, it just makes uh, the build a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about some of the environment details. It'll pull that in from the config. This tutorial here assumes that you have this there. Um, if you don't, you'll have to go and edit the platform io.ini file with the correct values. Right, so let's go ahead and go up to File, Open Folder, go to our firmware folder and we want to open it at this level so the root of the folder that we just moved everything to you don't want to drill into the marlin folder and open it there because you're going to be missing most of the data you need to actually build it'll still have the config files there so you think you'll be able to make the changes um, but you won't actually be able to build all right so let's go ahead and select this Now, since we are using a bug fix build, what I like to do first before making any changes is go ahead and kick off a build to make sure that there is no issues. Um, so I'm just gonna go over to auto build and then show auto build panel, which is this, and then hit build. Um, this is just gonna tell us that before making any changes, that everything is good to go. So that way, if we do have issues afterwards, we know that it's related to the change we made, not to the config. All right, it looks like that was successful. Um, one thing I do wanna point out here is if you click on this after the build, you can get the file directly. It'll take you straight to the firmware file that was created and you would just copy this onto your SD card. Uh, just make sure the SD card is eight gig or less and format it as FAT32. Um, and another thing here, you'll notice that there wasn't much information in this output. Uh, silent build was on, so if you wanna see the full output, uh, uncheck this box and then it'll give you everything there all right so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the changes we need to make so let's go ahead and jump up to our explorer go into marlin and uh, configuration.h so the reason we're able to make the changes on the configuration example for another printer is the board itself is what most of the changes are actually tied to so the board being the same between the two uh, pretty much accounts for everything you would have to change uh, the difference being you might want to change the name if you don't want it to say ender 3 pro or you'll have to change the build volume or a couple other settings if you have uh, some aftermarket parts uh, but in general the config or the firmware is for the board itself. There are just a couple external parameters you have to set. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. Um, first one I was talking about is the name. So if you were to just build this uh, as it is now, it's gonna say Ender 3 Pro. You can switch this to CR10 or uh, whatever you want. Now, if you go ahead and hit Control F, it'll bring up the search bar, and then we'll search for like 235. 
which is going to be the build plate size for the Ender 3 Pro. And then we're going to want to change this to whatever it is for the printer you're using. If you have a standard uh, CR10, it's going to be 300 by 300 by 400. So this will be 300. And then your Z max position would be 400 because that's the height for that. And if that's the only thing you're doing, if you don't have a BL touch or CR touch or anything like that, that's really all you have to do. You'll just make those settings, save it, uh, kick off the build, then put that in the printer. If you have a BL touch, search for that really quick. Uh, you would uncomment that here um, and then scroll up. You would want to make sure this is commented if you have the Z stop connected and uh, all five wires connected to the BL touch port, uncomment this, and then um, you'll want to set your offset positions. Uh, this is just normal stuff for the BL touch, um, so it'll be whatever it ends up being. So here, uh, I typically would change this back to zero, and then you, I use negative 44 and negative seven most of the time, but it would really just depend on the mount you're using uh, for the BL touch, and then you would want to set the auto bed leveling settings, Z safe homing, and then uh, uncomment out minimum software and stop Z uh, so that you can go below zero. And then that would be it. But just to get you going on the um, SKR Mini E3 uh, V3, uh, this is all you need to do. What we just covered there, we'll go back to our auto build plugin and go ahead and hit build. And it's gonna run through the build again and then give us our output. Then when that's done, it went ahead and opened up the folder for me, and we would take this firmware.bin file, put it on the SD card, and put it in the printer. All right, guys, so if you followed that process, you should now have a build that'll be usable with a CR10. Um, the main changes were really just the name, which is optional, and the bed size, because everything else is really related to the board. Um, just keep in mind that, like with anything else, when you're changing the firmware, you will want to set your e-steps and go through that process. Just to, uh, It's really just calibrating your printer. Uh, anytime you're doing a board swap, you're going to want to do that. Or if you're messing with the hot end, uh, I would also recommend it as well. I plan to have this video live on a Friday, so I'll have the firmware out on the website uh, by that Sunday. Uh, if you guys test the firmware and there are any issues with it, uh, feel free to reach out let me know. I can make adjustments to it, uh, but I figured I would give that as an option for people who just want to grab the firmware and don't want to actually do the builds. If there are custom settings or things that you guys need, uh, you can also reach out as well. But if you have any questions about what I covered or like to see any other videos, uh, go to leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.